everyone, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I am going to show you how I paint a lovely branch design with pink flowers and green leaves on this glass candle holder. You know my favorite thing to paint are flowers, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush actually two of them. And these are one stroke brushes. A three quarter quad one stroke brush. My favorite fingernail brush which is a fine line brush. And a dotting stylus. Alright, paints I'm going to be using today are Burn Umber, Linen, Teddy Bear Brown, Thicket, Citrus Green, Wicker White, Magenta, and Berry Wine. Show you, show you that a little bit better. Berry Wine. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to start by painting the branch onto my design. I am going to just start by dipping my brush into all these colors and if you want you can even include the, the white. I'm just going to do the browns. The purpose of this video is to show you how to paint this design. You can paint it on wood, plastic, glass, metal, whatever you choose to do, whatever surfaces you want to paint on. And I'm going to try not to run my branch too far because, you know, I'm really good at sticking my fingers in my paint and messing it up. So I'm going to try not to do that. And I am using the chisel as edge of my brush instead of using a round brush or a liner brush, which you could do. But I just want to make sure that I get this in, tapped in, that it's on here nicely and opaque because I don't want it to come off, scratch off or whatnot. And it's not, it's not that hand painting a glass surface is not durable because it actually is dur more durable than you, you would think. But it's still something that you just have to be careful with. It's a hand painted item. And it's not something that's been, you know, uh, baked in a kiln or something of that sort where it would be more, more of a permanent fixture on the glass. But this, if you do it right, is pretty durable. So I don't want you to, I don't want to scare you away. I just want you to be aware of it. You know, that you do need to, to try to get your designs to be as as opaque as possible because you know, the thicker your paint coverage is the better and more durable that paint is going to be on your item. But I don't mean to cake it on so thickly that it, if you bake it that it actually bu uh, bubbles as that can happen too. So please do keep that in mind that that is something that happens if the paint is on. If you're doing dots, if your dots are really thick, guess what? You're likely going to have, have them bust. And that means that they might bubble up and go back down. They might actually have a broken ridge and then have a, a uh, empty center. Yeah, it's not a real pretty look, so I do want to make sure that you're aware of that, just to be cautious. If you do a design and you are actually worried about it popping or bubbling in the oven, with this paint, you don't actually have to bake it. So that's one thing nice, you do have that option. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is hit this with a dryer so that it has a little bit of drying or you can give it drying time if you want 
so that it's a little bit easier to do the rest of the work over this design. Now by doing the drying on this doesn't mean that you're still not going to pick up some of the the brown when you're doing your design however it gives you a better opportunity to you know create a nicer design when you're painting directly over it pretty much wet on wet so there still could be some movement but we're just going to do these and pray for the best all right so let's go ahead and start with it's going to be a rounded kind of a bud but it's kind of different it's not a the normal bud that you'd be used to seeing I am going to go over it like this that in there again there could be a, there could be some movement here with the paint colors but that's okay it really is so I'm going to just kind of swim it over here have that actually I might even just kind of bring it up like that it's not a regular bud it's kind of like a partially I don't want to say partially open because it's really not even open either. It's just a different kind of bud. Let's say that and leave it. Leave it at that one. Alright, so basically I am double loading this. If I want to place any other uh, color in it, I can do that still. I am still working on buds right now. So this next one is just going to be more of a rounded one. If I feel that it's not opaque enough, I will come back in here and I am going to do another coat over it. If you're new to my channel, please know that the glass that I'm painting on right now I use for the purpose of doing videos. It's not something I sell. So I paint on it and wash it off. I'm trying to minimize the amount of glass that I'm actually using. <laughs> Um, purely because I am running out of room in my home. Alright, and then this is just going to be a different type of a, a bud too. Uh, just doing some wiggling and just some pulling like I did here. That's flatter. And this is going to be with the roughly edges, as you see. Might even just do another little pull like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Still fighting a cold. As I know, probably most of America is, if you're anything like our family. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to do this kind of a leaf. Or petal. I'm sorry, I'm saying leaf and I'm mean, meaning petal for the flower. And you can, when you're doing these, do kind of, I don't want to say don't have to have them all with the darker pink on the outer edges. You can actually kind of intermix like this. See that? As you're going around. And if you want to take some time to do some blending and blend these a little more, you can do that as well. I'm just opting to just go ahead and paint and move on. Now on this one I'm going to do the lighter on that edge and then over here I'm going to pick up some of the darker. See how pretty that is? Now you're finding that I can make this a five petal or a six petal. So I'm going to go ahead here and continue on. Now I can even do this and just keep it with the dark on the outer edges or I can do this turn it around again and come back this direction with the lighter color going this way I'm going to go over it again here I don't like how it ended right there do this again like I said you can blend it two more if you want 
this just gives it just a little bit of interest because it's different. And you can even, you know, just lightly go over it because you don't want to lift the paint. And you've got a neat looking flower. I like doing them like this. All right, I'm going to keep going. I, my intent is to have at least three of the bigger open. This is what I did on my initial design. So I'm just putting it on here and just kind of wiggling it. And I can come down like this, do that and come back. Just have fun with it. I mean, that's the main thing I want to I want to stress here is when you're painting, this is supposed to be relaxing and you have some fun with it. You know, make it relaxing. Don't think too hard about it. If that makes sense. You know, just enjoy yourself. Get out, paint. If you want to do this on do your designs on wax paper and just throw it away when you're done. You know, or you have a piece of glass that you want to do it on and then you want to just kind of pitch it when you're done. Rinse it off. Fine, do it. It doesn't have to be anything real serious. And don't let anybody ever make you feel like you, you have to do it a certain way in order for it to be right. Because if you're happy with it, and I can't stress this enough, then that's, that is what you need to be looking at. Are you happy? Is this design something that you are trying to go for? Is this design something that actually that you like. See how pretty these are though when you kind of just rotate the colors around? Even when you do your leaves, if you do that, I think that makes a, a big difference. Oops, I must have picked up some green on that one. And I don't need the green in my actual flower. On the actual flower petals. Don't need it. And see on this one I kind of went a little over. So I'm going to come back in here and just kind of go over it a little bit. Just straighten it up. And if I want to put in another leaf, I keep saying it, I am so sorry, another petal, I can. I don't have to make it big. I don't have to make it huge. i just make it like that and call it a day. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right, I am going to pick up, come back in here with my browns. I think I got a little bit of my berry wine on here too. But I'm going to come back here and address these. Now again, this is not exactly how I did it on my actual design. But I'm just putting this, on my sample design I should say, I'm just putting this around here. I don't want it to be... Um, anything like my, you know, straight lines or whatnot. I want it to have a little different twist to it. So that's why I'm just kind of tapping it and making it look a little rough. That is intentional. And I am using the same colors that I used on the branch work. Then I'll come over here to these little and just kind of pull in with a flat brush to some little strokes. I can make this one a little bigger if I want. Some more color to it. Okay. Just kind of pull it down in here. I don't want it to be too brown or too pink I should say. And then do a little bit, and like I said, I have more room on my original than I have right here that where I'm trying to put in these. And you'll see when you see pictures of it, you'll see. But 
I did want to just add some brown into these and not just green. All green. Not just all green. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do, start adding in my green. And I am double loading my citrus green and my thicket. I can tap in a little bit of white too along the line here if I want. This I'm going to just pull some of these in here on some of these little branches that stick out. And when you're doing this you might find that you want to add some more branches but you can always add those in. This is going to be trying to think here. I want to add in just some of my basic one stroke little leaves and pull those in just with a little just a thin little um, stem there. And then I want to do a leaf where it's more pointed and it comes back like this. I'll do it again here and then come back. And I can put a little stem through the center if I want. And then maybe even pull some of the other leaves like this out of it. See, for some reason I have so much more control when I use a flat brush than when I use a uh, liner brush or script liner, script brush kind of deal. Not sure why. I guess it's a matter of what you're used to using, maybe. Alright, so then we're going to do, do this again. I'm going to pull it. It's kind of like the flowers themselves. The petals. On these, you can rotate, meaning not have the same color on the outside as you do for each, you know, rotate it. Like I did contact what I did with the the flowers themselves. Just move the color around. So you have some that have the light on the outside, some that have the light on the inside. And you can actually do it to where you have the light on one side and you know just do the other side the opposite direction. Kind of make gives it a, a neat look. And you can come through these these branches too if you want. Put it, put in some more brown if you feel the need. And uh, let's see here what else we're gonna do. I am going to set this down. Hopefully I'm not messing it up. And I'm going to do some more leaves at the top here. Just gonna swing them around. Do a blending stroke. And I can do do three. You can just pull some stems out too if you feel like it. I just pull like some little fillers out. Like that with the with the leaves. Not the fancy. And are meant to be very easy, so please understand that if you think my design is too easy, it's meant to be that way. Because I want, I want you to paint. I want people to get creative and feel comfortable with that. I just don't, I don't like when people are afraid to do it. Oh, I can't do that. You know, I couldn't do it either. 
And I'm not the greatest artist. I mean, there's people that would blow me away. But when I was growing up, I never knew I could do any of this. I was not afraid to do it. Okay, so you can like put... But I wasn't afraid to do it. That's the main thing. I was maybe put some leaves up in here. You can even put them in between the flowers. The only apprehensiveness I have right now is that I don't want to pull some of my pink up, which could happen. But it's kind of pretty to have, you know, some leaves within your your design. Because, you know, typically that's what would really happen, right? And on this one, I'm just going to do this kind of a... Like I said, and you can reverse your brush. Even on this, I'm going back in the opposite direction. Because then that pulls in the other colors, like the lighter green or the, the citrus green. Just like on here, I can come back up here and pull, kind of fill these in a little more. Maybe with just some thinner, like that. I think I did, well no, that's the beginning of the stem, so I, have that, I did that backwards, but you know, actually I did not. I'm like, what was I thinking? You might have some of those moments too in life. It's like, oh my goodness, where did this come from? Alright, so I think for the greenery, I'm going to leave it as such. Um, maybe this little spot here, I might pull some over. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is try to get this wrapped up for you. I am dipping, trying to get this fine liner brush really coated with the burgundy wine, or berry wine, I always want to call it burgundy, and I'm going to just ever so lightly just try to put in as much of these as I can. And I try to just lightly put them in. Kind of wisp, be more wispy than anything. Then you cross them over. Then I'll come over here and do the same thing. Now, with the painting that I'm doing on this candle holder, I, if I were to be doing this for a piece that I would sell or for myself I would do the design all the way around just so you know I'm just doing par partly around because I want to show you and not have the video be so long and try to keep my fingers out of my paint because I am really bad about that If you can see this and just lightly fill in the brush up just with a single color and then just pulling, I can pull it all the way around the flower, partly around the flower. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Kind of still trying to get over having a cold, flu, whatever we've had in, the, in our family. All right, so then I'm going to take my dotting stylus. And I am just doing brown dots. I could do whatever color I want. I could do a few colors. On this though, you can see the dots, even though you know the berry wine is dark. So are the dots. Might get a little taste of uh, some of the other browns here because my paint is a little muddled, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna randomly dot all the way around wherever I have these little tendrils, stamens, whatever, whatever we're going to call these. 
And again, just tap, 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 tap. Got some down in here, so I'm going to tap down in there. It's cute, I think. Yeah, as I say, typically this would be beautiful with a candle in it. I mean, you could even use it as a little flower vase if you wanted to. You could use it to put, if you wanted to do a candy bar, if you're entertaining, you know, be glassware that you could put something like that in, different candies. But there you have it. Very easy, very pretty, vibrant, I think. And just simple strokes. Cute little branch. And there you go. And as I mentioned before, if you feel like you don't like the green covering this brown, I mean, you can come back in and just lightly go through it and clean it up if you want. I kind of like it with the green and a little bit of brown showing, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I hope you like it. If you do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified when I post something new. And last but not least, at the end of the video, if you'll hit that share button that's underneath the video. If you're finished watching, share this on your social network with all your friends and family. I would appreciate it. I do appreciate you coming to my channel and taking the time to watch. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave those down below. And until the next time, you have a good one.